in today's show, I'm going to go ahead and pick my NBA All-Star teams. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Doing something a little bit different today. The beginning of the NBA All-Star voting process is here. So what I thought I'd do is go ahead at this early point and pick my All-Stars. I'm going to go and do this again later before the official announcement. So we'll do one now and we'll do one in what, three, four weeks time, whenever that announcement is. But I thought it'd be fun to do an initial pick of my all-stars, starters and bench following yeah, generally the criteria, the five, um, the five starters, seven bench with the seven bench having two backcourt, three frontcourt and uh, two wildcard spots. And I must say, um, if you haven't done it, go ahead and try and do it. Because I know you're going to be critical of this team. That's fine. Um, it's tough, especially in the Eastern Conference. It is really, really hard to uh, to narrow the field down. Um, so, hey, what are we waiting for? Let's get stuck into it straight now. And we'll start with my Eastern Conference starters in the backcourt. Their teammates in real life. Their teammates on this all-star team, Kyrie Irving and James Harden. I think it's pretty hard to go past the numbers that those guys have put up. I know that Irving missed some time, but he's played 15 games. That's one fewer than Joel Embiid at this point. It's um, two fewer than James Harden. It's not that It's not that small of an amount. It's more than Jason Tatum. It's not that small of an amount. So Irving and James Harden starts. Irving's averaging 28 points, shooting 54 from the field. True shooting of 65%. It's pretty bloody good. Harden leads the league in assists, and he's averaging 24 points with seven boards, and his true shooting is 63%. Hard to find a real argument that those guys shouldn't be your starting backcourt in the Eastern Conference. Now, I am not doing this based on fantasy all-stars. This is not me predicting what votes will be or what people will do to put in the starters. This is me saying if I was the all-star general, if I was the person in charge of the all-star game, these are the teams at this point, Wednesday in the US, Thursday, the 4th of February here, these are the teams that I would put out there. In the front court, Yanni Antetokounmpo. I know it's been a, a bit of an off season for Yanni compared to last year, but his off season is still really, really good. It's still better than most. He's averaging 27, 11, and six with a triple one, shooting 56 from the field. Yes, the free throws are rough, but even with the free throw shooting, he's still got a true shooting of 61. And then Irving and Harden, their teammate. Kevin Durant is averaging 31 points per game. He's true shooting 67. He's averaging over five assists and seven rebounds. Almost one and a half blocks. I don't see how you can argue that at all. And then at center, again, a guy that's probably top two, top three for MVP, Joel Embiid, averaging 28 and 11 with 1.3 steals and 1.3 blocks, a true shooting of 67%. The East All-Star starters was pretty easy, I thought. No real, no real concern to me with those. If you do have any issues, if you do have any complaints, hey, drop it down in the comments. Tweet them at me. I'd love to hear what your um, what your issue is. Now, with the reserves, there are going to be complaints for sure. I've got seven reserves, and if I'm being honest, I'm just going to count this up. I had 10 other blokes that I could easily make an argument for to get in. That is how deep the Eastern Conference is this year. And I'll go through some of the names I've left off after this <clears throat> that I considered. But it is real tough. So let's look at my Eastern Conference reserves and hold on to your dicks because you're probably going to have a heart attack at some of these picks. My two backcourt picks, Bradley Beal and Zach Levine. Hard to ignore Beal. He's averaging 35 points per game. Like that's, that's volume. I know he was ignored last year and I know his team's terrible and I know he allegedly wants to stay there, but his body language will say he doesn't. He's true shooting 60%. He's giving 35 points, points per game. He's carrying a massive load. Giggity. Giggity. Um, I've got to have him in. 
and I think it's time for Zach Levine. Now, I have been a, a critic of Zach Levine in the past. I think I'm not sure yeah, if he can be a good, pl- a, a, yeah, the best player in a good team, and it still hasn't been proven. But averaging 27, 5, and 5 on a true shooting of 65%, yeah, steals have been pretty solid as well. He gets the line. He still has issues with um, turnovers and decision-making. He's not a perfect player by any means, and I did struggle a little bit over this one. <clears throat> but he's in. He's on my all-star bench. My three front court players, Jalen Brown gets the nod. 27 points per game, true shooting of 62%, two and a half threes. Been carrying this team at times with guys like Kemba out and then with Tatum out. He's been remarkable for the Celtics. He's in. Bam Adebayo, averaging 20 points per game, nine rebounds and five assists. Yes, the defensive stats are a bit down from Bam, but he has still been excellent defensively, and he's taken his offensive game up. He's hitting 86% of his free throws. He can hit long twos now. The next step is stepping out and hitting threes. He's in there. And then the guy who is probably the favorite, second favorite for defensive player of the year, Miles Turner. Only 14 points, but averaging almost four blocks per game. He's hitting 1.6 threes. He's hitting 66% of his twos for a true shooting of 63%. He's been, frankly, frankly, remarkable. And there will be plenty of criticism of this Miles Turner pick. I think probably out of these ones that I've announced so far, the Turner and the Levine pick, people will not like, especially when they see who has been left off the team. But the Indiana Pacers are 12 points better off with Turner on the court than when he's on the bench. That is a phenomenally large number. It's a phenomenally large number. I can, un- I said, I can understand arguments. I've got 10 other blokes who are off this team who I could see being in the squad, and I could see arguments for any of them. But I put Turner in there, and let's, if you are on audio, is spoiler, Sabonis so is not in this team, because the, the Pacers are 2.7 points better off when he sits on the bench, versus Turner. Turner's a plus 12, and Sabonis is a minus 2.7. That's big to me. So then my front court, Bryant, Brown, Adebayo, and Turner, and my two wild cards, Jason Tatum and Chris Middleton. Hard to ignore Middleton, who's averaging, or shooting 52, 46, and 92. He's averaging 21 points and six assists with six rebounds. It's just really good. He's very, very good. So he gets in there. And then Jason Tatum, only the 14 games played, which is the fewest out of any of those guys, but still averaging 27 and seven. His efficiency hasn't quite been as good as others at 58.6 true shooting, but he's been awesome when he's out there. 27 point average per game. He makes it in as my last... um, as my last spot in the in the All Star bench. Now the guys that I left out, these are the names that I considered: Demontis Sabonis, Malcolm Brogdon, Julius Randle, Fred VanVleet, Nikola Vucevic, Trey Young, Gordon Haywood, the Thick Hogsman, Tobias Harris, Jeremy Grant, and Colin Sexton. I think all of those guys, if I name them in the All Star team, you'd go fair enough. Now. If I name them over some of the guys in there, you might say that's not fair enough. But I think all of them are absolutely in the discussion to me. So that's 22 players that I think are worthy of all-star status in the East. And spoiler alert, it's not the same in the West. It is. It was way harder to get someone to fill the last all-star spot in the West than it was for me to cut people out of the East. It's just it, the quality is not there. And it's weird to say. Let's look at the Western Conference starters. In the backcourt, Steph Curry and Luka Doncic. Again, I'm not sure I have too many complaints there. 28 points per game for Steph. Six assists, 4.6 triples. He's carrying this Warriors team to a massive degree. And then Luka's putting up huge numbers. 27-9 and 9.5. And Again, carrying the Mavericks team, who is struggling a bit, for sure. <clears throat> Much like Curry's Warriors are struggling. But I think they are the right choice there. In the front court, the fun guy, Kawhi Leonard. I'm a fun guy. (laughs) He's averaging 26, 5, and 5. He's shooting, true shooting, 62%. 92 from the line. Hard to argue that one. LeBron. LeBron James. He's in my all-star team. It has been a bit of a down year for LeBron, but somehow he's still the favorite for the MVP. He's averaging 25, 8, and and 7.5. He's hitting almost three threes per game at 41%. He's taken that part of his game to a new level. LeBron is my all-star starter. And then at center. Big, big chungus, big chungus, big chungus, big, big. 
No, absolutely no debate about this one. 27 points for Jokic, 12 rebounds, 8.6 assists, 1.8 steals, true shooting of 66%. He has been, in my mind, at least a top two MVP player. I've got him and Embiid as one and two. I don't know which order at this stage. But Jokic is my starting center for the Western Conference. Again, hard to really see any debate there at all with uh, Big Chungus as the starting center. So my Western Conference All-Star starters, Steph Curry, Luka Doncic, Kawhi Leonard, LeBron James, Nikola Jokic. Now onto the bench. And a couple of names here. They even I've done it and I've got the graphic prepared and I'm going to talk about it. And I'm still not sure that they should be in. See if you can pick who they are. On the bench, in the front court, Anthony Davis. Yep, down the year from Davis. Still averaging 22 and 8 with two blocks. Not great, but yeah, it's good enough to be an all-star for me. The crucifix, Christian Wood. <clears throat> now still has defensive issues for sure, but he's averaging 23 and 11, almost two blocks, 63% true shooting. He's been the best player on the Rockets team, I'd say. A really key piece. I think if it was in the Eastern Conference, he wouldn't get in. But in the Western Conference, here he is. And then Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Now, Gobert's box score numbers, they don't stand out. Huge amounts, 13 points. 14 rebounds is good. 2.7 blocks is good. 60% from the field is good. But we know he's an absolutely elite defender. He's in the discussion again for Defensive Player of the Year. Um, the team is a massive 16 points better off when he's on the court. And the Jazz just reeled off a nine-game winning streak where they won every game by double digits, basically. They're really good. So he's in there for that reason. I'm not certain about it. Backcourt players. Damian Lillard. Again, that's it started off a bit slow. <clears throat> but he's averaging 29, four and a half and seven, hitting four threes per game, hitting 38% of his threes, true shooting of 63. Not really a big argument. And then Paul George, who's had a real bounce back here after the playoff failures. 24, six and five and a half, shooting 45% on threes, 65% true shooting, 1.3 steals. He has to get in. And my two wild cards. Debated over these ones a bit as well, but then I just couldn't find other options. Shea Gildas Alexander on a Thunder team that's winning way more games than they should. He's averaging 22, 5, and 6. He's true shooting 62. He's defending at a pretty good level as well. Um, I think he's stepped up really in a situation where everything was like, well, Shea, now you've got to lead us. I think he's doing a fantastic job and you're leading them to more wins they really should, uh, than they should have gotten. And this last spot, man, it was hard. And we're not comfortable with it. But I'm putting Mike Conley in there. And even now saying it out loud, I'm not sure I believe it. But the Jazz have been playing well. I probably, you know, in hindsight, maybe I should have put Donovan Mitchell in there. But Mitchell didn't start this season out that well. Conley is averaging, he's only playing 30 minutes a night. He's averaging, what, 20 points per game? 17 points per game, sorry, six assists. 82% from the line, shooting 40% from three. I just feel like he's been solid. The Jazz are also a massive 22.6 points better off when he is on the court versus when he's on the bench. That is a staggering amount. An on-off of 22.6 is staggering. Mitchell's is good at 16, but 22.6 is staggering. So he gets my final spot. Again, I'm not happy with it. I'm not... I'm not convinced with Conley there, but when I look at the other names that I left out, and maybe it should have been Don Mitchell, the other name who it probably could have been and probably should have been is CJ McCollum. And maybe if I went to back to do this now, I would reconsider McCollum in there. But the Blazers haven't been particularly good. CJ's had his struggles. He's currently injured. Um, don't know if he'd even be available to play the All-Star game. But he's probably the name that I'd have. So the names that I left out in the West, the name, the list is nowhere near as long. It's five names. It's CJ McCollum. It's Donovan Mitchell. It's Brandon Ingram. It's Chris Paul. And it's De'Aaron Fox. And even that Fox one, I'm not sure about. I just didn't see any other names. Now, maybe there's someone that's just completely obvious and I'm missing them. 
drop them down in the comments below. But to me, they are the five that are, yeah, are tight there at the end of the West bench. So my West bench to recap, Anthony Davis, Christian Wood, Rudy Gobert, Damian Lillard, Paul George, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, and Mike Conley, with the missouts being McCullum, Ingram, CP3, Mitchell, and Fox. Let's just go back and recap everything now. East starters, Kyrie Irving, James Harden, Yanni Antetokounmpo, Kevin Durant, Joel Embiid. East reserves, Brad Beal, Zach Levine, Jalen Brown, Bam Adebayo, Miles Turner, Jason Tatum, and Chris Middleton. West starters, Curry, Doncic, Kawhi, LeBron, and Jokic, and the reserves, Anthony Davis, Christian Wood, Rudy Gobert, Damian Lillard, Paul George, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, and Mike Conley. That are, they are my all-star teams for 2021, this early stage. This will change, I'm sure, going forward. Let me know what yours are. Drop them down in the comments. Which ones were bad picks? Which ones were good picks? How would you have done it differently? And don't forget to subscribe. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on YouTube. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. See ya.